It is six minutes to the top of the hour. Welcome back to Sunday Live here at Citizen Television on to our regular feature, Citizen Planet. And ever since President William Ruto drove a yellow compact electric car during the Africa Climate Summit last month, there's been growing interest for the environmentally friendly alternative. Oh, there are clear benefits to going electric from the cost of moving around cheaper and, of course, it being good for the environment. We got a closer look at the car that caused all the buzz and also looked at the practicality of going with an option that is still largely misunderstood and unconventional. Citizen Planet starts now. A typical day in Nairobi. Vehicles negotiating their way through a traffic snarl-up. In the nation's capital, 54% of trips are made using either public transport or private cars, according to the Ministry of Transport. It is a big reason why the transport sector contributes 20% of CO2 emissions in Kenya. You can blame it on the nearly 5 million combustion engine vehicles moving around the country. It's not surprising why this tiny car would stand out in a sea of fuel-guzzling cars. With Kenya now having the 12th costliest fuel in Africa and no sign of a drop in the prices at the pump, could this be the solution? It's been touted as Kenya's first electric vehicle by a local company called the Autopax Air Yetu. The car comes in two trim levels, the standard range, which covers 200 kilometers on a full charge, and the long-range Autopax Air Yetu Pro, which covers 300 kilometers when fully charged. And it comes with a price tag of between 1.7 million to 2 million shillings. 24-year-old CEO Joy Kalua drives operations at Autopax and says the company has already received over 200 pre-orders since the summit. The average Kenyan will be thinking, no, I'm trying to save on fuel. Yes. The fuel costs have gone up. So in a practical sense, why should I choose an electric vehicle? Yes, yes. So that's a very, very good question, Radiri. Um, this car can save you so much money on the daily, on your daily runnings. Uh, this car can take 200 kilometers uh, charge per charge, and there's another version that takes 300 kilometers per charge. And that will only cost you 300 shillings for the 200 kilometers and 500 shillings for the 300 kilometer version. What that looks like, you can go from Rongai to Westlands, that's about 22 kilometers per day. And that's, you can do nine trips within the week, nine trips. I think wow. that's, that saves a lot every day for the average Kenyan. Okay, so the thing that I notice here, Joy, um, compared to your conventional car, yes. the bonnet is a lot shorter. Yes, yes. Yeah. To run an electric vehicle, way less parts than you need for your combustion engine vehicle. And so you have your typical electric motor, mm -hmm. your battery, those are the biggest components of, 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 the, of the car. So the maintenance of an electric vehicle is way less. You don't have to think about your oil changes. All you have to think about, let me check how my battery life is doing. Mm -hmm. Let me check my brake pads let me check my tires let me add a little water for the windshield wipers mm. things like that nothing too complicated very simple saving you costs again i don't know what gets better than that wow can we take a look on the inside as yes. well So this is your digital cluster that tells you your your speed. So you have here, we're at zero kilometers per hour because you're not moving at the moment. The car can go up to 100 kilometers per hour. Okay. Uh, this is your range. This, the, that's how much we have left to travel. We're at 81%. This is 162 kilometers. And this is your odometer reading. So this is how far the car came at zero mileage. We've already done 361 kilometers on this car. And here we have your economy. You can change it to normal and you can change it to sport mode. Mm -hmm. So it has three different modes, depending on how you want to drive that day. <laughs> um, but if you go economy, of course, you're able to save much more. This shows you your power, how much you're, you're exerting by pressing the gas pedal. So you can, you can easily drive economically as it tells you how much you're using, how much energy you're using. And with the specs out of the way, it's our turn to take the Air EV Yetu for a spin. Okay, and then swivel to drive. Yes. That was very easy. 
and hazard lights here. Yes. Okay. Good to go. Wow. Well, you can see how much energy you're oh, yeah, consuming yes. based on yes. how heavy yes. I am on the pedals. Yes. <laughs> So it gets better. But is Kenya really ready for electric vehicles? First, let's begin with infrastructure. We decided to use Electromaps, a company that identifies charging stations worldwide using Google Maps. We counted at least 10 just in Nairobi and one in Mombasa at City Mall in Nyali. Often, the frustration of spending long hours in charging queues can be a deterrent, assuming one was unable to charge at home. On average, according to the e-mobility conference report 2023, the charging time for two- and three-wheelers, like a motorcycle or a tuk-tuk, averages four hours for a travel distance of 100 kilometers, while a four-plus-wheeler requires an average charging time of five hours for a travel distance of 300 kilometers. Another significant factor impeding the widespread adoption of electric vehicles is the high cost of electricity. However, back in May this year, the Energy Regulatory Authority approved Kenya Power's request for a separate tariff for electric vehicles, which will see their owners purchase power at discounted prices. According to Kenya Power, electric vehicle users will be paying 17 shillings for a unit of electricity. That's compared to 27 shillings for a unit of power for domestic users. And during off-peak hours, the cost will be slashed further to just 9 shillings per unit. It's a step in the right direction. However, industry players say the government needs to do more to encourage the switch to electric mobility by waiving taxes on the vehicles as they are expensive to acquire in the first place. Victoria Rubadiri, Citizen Planet.